So there you have it. Two harvests per year using LED lamps to extend the photo period to grow hops in Florida. Yes, folks, Max Raphael here from Hops World. And we had the pleasure to sit down again with Dr. Shinsky Agehara to discuss their second harvest of the year. Although there were some problems this year, they had a storm, uh, some other issues with their harvest. Between both harvests, they ended up coming up with 90% of the harvest that they have in Yakima Valley. Yakima Valley is in the state of Washington, and in the three states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, they grow uh, over 95% of the hops in the U.S., and in the Yakima region, I believe it's about 70% of the U.S. hops, and that's where they have the best climate, the best temperature, the best photo period to get the best yields of hops in most places in the world. Now, in Florida, where we're way away from the typical latitude and the photo period, which is the length of daylight and normal for hop growing hops, Dr. Shinsky has had this program now, and this was the first full year using LED lamps to extend the photo period. And they came up with uh, results after two harvests, even with some problems that are out of this world. Uh, we sat down with the doctor and asked him 20 questions about their second harvest, their total yield for the year, and their mistakes or problems that they had, and for the future. The future is bright in growing hops using LED lamps in areas that were not ever typically area to grow hops. So without further ado, we're going to go and sit down with Dr. Shinsky. Let's do it. We are today uh, doing our fourth live here on Facebook in our group, Hops Brazil. Uh, we hope that um, the people hung around here for a little bit of a late start, but today's our holiday uh live you can see our uh, little decorations our christmas tree back here <laughs> we want to wish all a very happy and especially a safe holiday um it's been a tough year for everyone but uh let's have faith that 2021 brings a lot more uh hope and joy and family things that we're all missing and lots of hops so without further ado, um, we have Dr. Shinsky Agehara back from University of Florida. Uh, and we're going to ask him 20 questions uh, about his hop yard in Florida and the final results after their second harvest. So welcome, uh, Dr. Shinsky. Uh, Thank you, we Mac. appreciate you being here. So, Doctor, um, going into our first question, I'd like to ask if you can remind folks uh, what uh, was the original object of the project and uh, how did it get started? Sure. We started the project in 2016. And uh, at the beginning, we just wanted to see if we can grow hops in Florida. And we started the project because we have many uh, craft breweries in Tampa. And uh, my research center is located only 30 minutes from Tampa. So there, there were a lot of requests. And uh, so that was the initial objective. And uh, at the beginning, uh, the, the project didn't go well. We had many issues. Then uh, we installed LED lights. That was 2018. Then uh, finally we saw some promising results. So now we, we have more hope. Uh, and uh, we want to develop hops as a new crop in Florida. And I'm hoping that uh, we can, you know, uh, share the information, uh, you know, with people in different countries uh, where they might have the same issue as in Florida. So, you know, hops can be a new crop in uh, not just in Florida, but in a subtropical climate. 
So, doctor, um, can you explain the size of the hop yard uh, in total and what varieties you're actually planting, please? Yes, uh, our hop yard is uh, 2.2 acres. And uh, we, right now we are using 1.6 acres out of 2.2. And uh, uh, for my trials, uh, I'm using only Cascade. My research is focused on uh, optimizing crop management. My my colleague, uh, Dr. Deng, uh, he's a plum breeder, and uh, he's the one testing uh, about 20 varieties, and he also has his breeding program. So, doctor, can you explain, please, the, your trellis size and styles that you're using in your project? Yes, so this is a new experiment we started this year. We are comparing two different uh, trellis designs. One is a straight straight trellis. It has only one cable per row. The other design is B trellis. It has three cables per row. The middle cable is used to hang LED lights and additional two cables are used to install twines. And uh, for each trellis design, we are testing a three different height uh 3.7 meter 4.6 meter and 5.5 meter and that's uh 12 15 18 feet so doctor uh i was there uh, about a week after you had some storm damage uh during your harvest and i did notice a considerable number of cones on the ground can you explain what happened and uh what was your uh proximate cone loss yeah, we, we think we lost about 10 to 30 percent of yield by the uh, by the storm, and we lost more cones on the uh, uh, on the east side, outside row where the wind was blowing to. But, but the good thing was that trellis was not damaged, and we had uh, more than 50 miles per hour, so at least uh, you know there was no damage on the trellis. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, I also uh, mentioned that the, it's one big advantage that you had mentioned prior, I think to me personally, uh, when I was there about having two harvests per year, mm -hmm. uh, because um, if you do have a loss and it could be worse, I imagine if there's a bigger storm, uh, at least the loss is 50% uh, yep. maximum. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, doctor, what were the final numbers then on your second harvest uh, after the damages? Mm -hmm. the, so in, in my trial, we have two different trellis design, different height. The highest yield was for the 18 feet, uh, that's 5.5 meter B trellis, and the yield was 230 grams per hill uh, or 540 kilograms per hectare. This this was uh, dried at ten percent, correct? Yes. The most important um, number uh, of all would be the total yield um, for both both harvest, uh, even considering the damage to the uh, second harvest from the storm. What numbers did you come up with? Okay, so the yield for the same trellis in the spring season was. 1260 kilograms per hectare so the two season combined it was 1800 kilograms per hectare uh, so doctor i was um explaining to uh, the people that while i was there i noticed you used the hop harvester that i, I guess that's a 5p mm -hmm. uh, and a uh, great little machine for what it is but there was a considerable loss um, of uh, cones it never got picked and I also noticed the workers had to put the plants through two or three times and still um, it's impossible to pick every cone. Uh, what do you uh, suspect the, as a percentage um, of loss? I have an idea in my mind but uh, do you think it was uh, considerably um, would make a difference in the long term yes so so we had to play with the setting and uh, 
when you have the right setting, then uh, you can minimize the loss. But we think that the loss is about ten、uh, percent right now. So I was explaining that there are adjustments on the machine that help、uh, the harvest, apparently. But still, it's not a perfect machine. It's I think they've only been out a few years. But without the machine,、uh, it's a lost cause,、uh, and、uh, it definitely helps ninety percent、uh, mm-hmm. compared to the way I do it, <laughs> hand picking. So、um, I.、Uh, Did some basic math and assumed a ten percent loss at the harvesters for both crops, and then a ten percent storm damage loss would give us a really. The numbers are impressive as is for Florida, but the potential yield could really be substantially more. What's your thought on that? Yes,、uh, yeah. If we didn't have the loss, you know, especially by the storm damage,、uh, I think、uh, our yield could be, you know, when we combine spring and fall season, it could be already at the、uh, Pacific Northwest.、Uh, with the loss, our yield was about ninety percent. So, you know, without the loss, I think we could、uh, we could be compatible with Pacific Northwest. But、uh, you know,、uh, our yield is just a first year yield. We are expecting that the yield is going up from next year, so you know we we want to achieve higher yield than Pacific Northwest, even with you know some loss、uh, during the you know、uh, harvesting operation and even possibly with storm. I did notice while I was there, and we spoke briefly about it.、Uh, a lot of the lower branches、um, seemed like the the tips maybe died off, and there were literally no cones. Uh, there was definitely、uh, potential to have a lot more cones, although the tops of the plants were loaded, loaded with cones, and、um, the the bottom、uh, was definitely missing some cones. I assume that was、uh, only for this harvest compared to the spring. And do you attribute that to anything, or do you、uh, have a reason that you think that might have happened? Yes, I, I think it's、uh, related with the timing of flowering. So in the fall,、uh, we try to delay.、Uh, well, we try to extend the vegetative growth stage, and、uh, so we try to keep the lights on for a long time, much much longer than the spring season. Then、uh, we realize that uh, the uh, a lot of the branches on the lower part they got brown tip, and uh, uh, somehow they got over matured. And by the time we turn off the light. Those branches with the brown tip、uh, couldn't make it to put flowers on. So I think this is something we have to uh, uh, change next next fall. So we have to maybe、uh, turn off the lights a little bit earlier before you know the lower branches、uh, become you know uh, uh, over matured. And we are、uh, also planning to change the. Supplemental lighting program、uh, after flower induction in the fall, because in the fall, daylight hours is getting shorter, and then、uh, we notice that toward the end of the season,、uh, we have only 11 hours, and at the、uh, harvest time, it's even less than 11 hours, which is a little bit too short. So,、uh, after flower induction, we might do. Just a little bit of、uh, photo period extension, not six hours, but maybe three hours, so we can maintain,、uh, you know, about、uh, 13, 14 hours, so we can promote maybe、uh, healthier growth. So, do you sp- suspect to uh, start um, lowering the amount of hours during flowering, or just keep it at、uh, say 12 or 13 hours during the whole flowering? Like eventually turn them off. Or uh... so, uh, for what we do in the spring, uh, we do、uh, six hours of photo period extension, and that would create sixteen, seventeen hours of daylight hours. Then、uh, we turn off、uh, at the end of April.、Uh, at that time, the natural daylight hours is about fourteen、uh, hours. Oh no, no I'm sorry.、Uh, it's about thirteen、uh, and a half. 
and it's gonna continue to uh, be a little bit longer. And uh, by the time we harvest, it's about 14 hours. Uh, in the fall, uh, the initial natural day length is 14 hours, but uh, it's going to get shorter and shorter. By the time we harvest, the natural daylight hours is only like t uh, uh, 10 hours and uh, 40 minutes, something like that. So I think the daylight hours is okay when the supplemental light is on because we are still creating 16, 17 hours, similar to the spring season. But when we turn off the light, uh, we have only 11 hours uh, compared to 13, you know, more, uh, almost 14 hours in the spring sure. season. So very different uh, daylight hour condition mm -hmm. after flower induction. So if we do just a few hours of photo period extension after flower induction, then we can create the same day length condition in both seasons. So that's what we are planning to test. Uh, next year. Okay. So, Doctor, um, assuming this has part to do with uh, why you want to keep the lights on, but I did notice the cone size of the cascade in particular um, when I was there was smaller than uh, a typical average cascade I've seen both in Brazil and in the U.S. Um, can you explain what your thoughts are uh, for that? Yes, uh, so we found that the cone size became a lot smaller in the fall compared to the spring. And we think it's something to do with the, the buying growth after flower induction in the fall. So uh, in the fall, uh, the vines didn't grow very healthy. Uh, at least the amount of buying growth in the fall after flower induction, it was much smaller. It was less compared to, to the spring season. So we think that the uh, the plants didn't have enough vegetative growth to support the development of cones. And uh, so, you know, so this is one of the reasons why we want to uh, do a little bit of photo period extension after flower induction. Uh, I'm hoping that that's going to promote more, you know, not just a cone development, but also uh, buying, buying growth after flower induction. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about the testing of the alpha beta acids and the oils. How, how did that turn out uh, this time? And then compared to spring, it was the same, different? And, it was uh, a little bit different uh, in the average. Alpha acid was 5.9% in the spring and 5.4% in the fall. That's pretty good. And the oils? The oil was uh, a little bit lower compared to the commercial average. It was uh, about 0.4 uh, to 0.5% in the spring. Uh, in the fall, it was between 0.2 to 0.5%. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, it's not percent, uh, uh, 0.2 to 0.5 milliliter per 100 grams. So, doctor, um, some people on some of the groups uh social groups have asked about the issue with labor and if it would be uh actually productive um uh obviously it's not as productive if you get the same amount of um, hops as a big farm and you have to string and train and pick twice have you actually done any actual testing on the percentage of labor extra or um i know they're students but the the cost uh, percentage wise involved yes uh that, that's the information uh, we are collecting now uh, for the labor uh in each season uh it's about uh, uh 400 450 hours per acre so it's about maybe 1100 hours per hectare that's the total labor including uh, stringing harvesting everything one thing that I remember you mentioned to me when I was there was the possibility you felt that um, you could probably sped, spread your lamps out further. Now, we put lamps up in our farm similar to yours, although ours are 220 volt and 18 watt, and we spread them out considerably further. And of course, the first night I went uh, to the out in the hop yard and walked every row to see 
if the light was actually hitting the ground, if it was causing shadows. Uh, I don't have the correct meter, unfortunately, and we've been looking for one and asked a few universities. Hopefully we can come up with something to actually measure. I mean, our best measurement is going to see if the plants flower or not in a few months here. But um, can you explain what your thoughts are on the um, on that and the uh, spreading of the lamps out possibly? Sure. So that the plants are extremely sensitive to light. Uh, if you are talking about a flowering process, and uh, right now, the spacing we are using is 20 feet apart between the two lights, uh, which is about six meters. And uh, this year, uh, we tested uh, 40 feet spacing, which is uh, which is uh, 12 meters between the two lights. And uh, we found that it's still working. We didn't see any flowering uh, when the lights were on. So. I think we can go at least as far as uh, 12 meters, but uh, when you use the wider spacing, you have to remember the risk because it can happen that uh, maybe one of the lights might go out during the season. So if you lose one light and, uh, if, you, and if you're using 12 meters apart, then uh, it becomes 24 meter distance. And uh, uh, once plants initiate flowering then we cannot stop so you know we have to be very careful so for now we are recommending growers to use six meter uh, i have to test we we know 12 meter works so now we have to test 24 meter if 24 meter works then uh, i feel comfortable recommending uh, 12 meters i understand so, doctor, when I was there, I did notice that there's a number of rows that uh, have no plants yet, but the trellis is built. I assume there's plans for expansion. Yes, uh, uh, we are trying to expand the breeding program, and that's one expansion. And uh, the new uh, and the other expansion is going to be for uh, the crop management trials. So we. Because we were able to increase the yield, uh, you know, the plant performance is better. Now we have to re-evaluate the optimum plant spacing and the amount of nutrients. So we have to repeat a plant spacing trial and uh, the fertilization trials. So that, those are the trials we are planning to do next year. Um, so I'm going a little bit out of order. Uh, just a, two questions here. I did notice that you had um, PVC tubes that mm -hmm. were about uh, four inch in diameter maybe, and um, they were stuck in the ground, one right next to the crown of the plant and then uh, two others a little distant away. Can you explain what that testing was and um, what you're trying to uh, uh, learn from the testing? Sure. So that transparent tube is about one meter deep. And that's the tube that we can insert the scanner. And the scanner goes inside the tube and scans 360 degree angle. And we can scan us at three different depths as deep as almost one meter. So we can, we can see uh, how deep roots are growing and we install tubes at different uh, distance from the crown. So we can also see how, uh, you know, how wide the roots can spread. So that's what we like to see. And then uh, we are also scanning the roots every two weeks. So we can see, you know, when the plants put new roots. And then uh, also those new roots, some of them will uh, age and then die. So we want to know the lifespan of the new roots, you know, how long they can live, and then uh, how often plants generate new roots. So, can you mention uh, some of the other tests that you're doing uh, in the field um, there with the hops plants? Different number of vines per twine, and we also tested different uh, pruning practices after spring harvest, and, uh, you know, especially a harvesting height, you know, uh, for example, three feet high and uh, 
1.5 feet high or at the ground level. And、uh, I'm trying to see how that will impact the growth in the fall season. And、uh, we also did、uh, some trials comparing different plant spacing and uh, uh, fertilization rate. But uh, uh, those trials, you know, I mentioned to you that we have to repeat because now、uh, our yield is better. So we have to repeat those trials. When I was there, I also noticed, Doctor, that、uh, you were gathering、uh, lots of stems, leaves,、uh, obviously cones. Um, and uh, labeling uh, each little package, each plant, I assume,、uh, where they came from in the hop yard.、Um, can you explain a little bit of that testing, which is, I, I, I put non typical,、uh, I've never seen before, but it sounds pretty interesting. Yes, so,、uh, so, so during the harvesting,、uh, we are collecting the tissue samples,、uh, leaf sample, Stem sample and cones, and、uh, we are also collecting root samples. What we want to know is、uh, you know, the biomass of each tissue. So we want to know, you know how biomass is partitioned in different tissue parts, leaves, stems, and so on. We also want to know、uh, how nutrients are partitioned in different tissue parts. So we do tissue analysis on each tissue. So, for example, if it's nitrogen, we want to know、uh, the percentage of nitrogen in leaves versus stems versus cones. And we want to use the information to improve our nutrient management. So, Doctor,、um, I explained that while I was there, I did meet Dr. Deng, who is、um, in charge of your breeding program.、Uh, can you explain a little bit about your future plans and the reason that you're?、Um, Breeding hops, it's、uh, one of my passions,、uh, kind of a hobby here.、Uh, maybe I'll hit the lottery, but、um, I'm sure you guys will do it better. <laughs> yeah, so, you know,、uh, my research is trying to focus on finding the best、uh, management system、uh, to maximize the performance of the, the existing varieties. But、uh, in the meantime, Dr. Deng, plant breeder, is Trying to create a new varieties that can adapt better to the subtropical climate. And、uh, we are hoping to create new varieties that can yield better and also have unique、uh, quality characteristics. you know. And、uh, so we want, to, we want to make something unique coming from Florida or coming from subtropical climate. So, can you、uh, give us any ideas what your.、Um... Changes may be in the near future, let's say for next year, from what you've learned, and then、uh, maybe a long term.、Uh, if you have plans, I'm sure they're、uh, changing every year based on your results, but、yes. maybe you can so, let us know a little. Yeah. So we are trying something different every season.、Uh, for next year,、uh, I want to optimize supplemental writing program in each season. And we, I want to find out the best uh, uh, photo period manipulation、uh, for the spring season and the fall season. And then,、uh, you know,、uh, other、uh, crop management practices as well, plant spacing. And,、uh, but, you know, it, it's going to take time. So、uh, next year, I'm going to focus on a supplemental writing program. So the、uh, last question and.、Uh... I hate to put, a, put you to a number that we're going to、uh, remind you someday. And、uh, whether you're going to tell everybody in the world, I told you so, <laughs> they're going to tell you, I told you so. Do you have an ultimate、uh, number in mind that you、uh, hope to achieve as an ultimate goal for a yield?、Uh, yes. Well,、uh, at least for next year, we want to increase the yield by 50%. So we can. Uh, at least when spring and fall season combine, it's going to be better than Pacific Northwest. But、uh, our ultimate goal is to achieve the same yield as in the Pacific Northwest in each season. So, you know,、wow. we don't know if it's possible, but、uh, we want to, you know, uh, uh, produce、uh, double yield compared to Pacific Northwest. 
Well, then they, uh, it'll definitely pay for itself to string and uh, pick twice a year if you can achieve that. Uh, and and uh, I'm definitely your number one fan and will be definitely the most person rooting for you and following in your footsteps down in Brazil. So, uh, doctor, I explained uh, to the folks in Brazil that uh, your numbers, I said, uh, I suspect they're definitely going to go up, whether they hit double. Uh, I'm not sure, but I definitely am confident that uh, the numbers, especially in Brazil for us, where the price of hops is so expensive, that if we can get the same numbers as Jack in the Valley, it's a win-win, depending on what hemisphere we're in. Uh, hopefully this opens up a big portion of the world to growing hops. Uh, in our group, we have people in uh, Central Africa, in um, Korea, Japan, Israel, uh, India, um, and uh, even there's people using lamps in Australia where they actually have uh, commercial growth down in the south, but people up in the north now using lamps. Um, but uh, I think uh, this really at least opens people's eyes to the possibility. And I, uh, next year, um, it, it's the same thing that happened in Brazil. You're still kind of in your infancy. And I believe that people are going to say, wow, uh, especially next year when they see the numbers that are happening. Um, I'm going to do my best to divulge the information for everyone to see um, the same as you are. One thing I mentioned to a few people the past week that uh, a lot of the hops people are very tight lipped. It's hard to get answers out of anyone. So um, you sharing all the information uh, is greatly appreciated on our channel on Hops World on YouTube. Uh, I'll post links here shortly when I get done below in the comment section. And we did post the prior live with the doctor that was explained a little more detail of the actual project. Um, it was a few months ago after their first harvest. Uh, mm -hmm. I wish you a happy holiday, doctor. Uh, I'm sure I'll be in touch. I have a few other questions uh, I wanted to ask you about. Um, we're still growing. Uh, we actually just uh, got done putting our lights and chopping our plants in Brazil. So hopefully we have enough time to uh, get a second harvest here before the year's out. Um, so thanks again. Have a happy holiday and a wonderful new year and health to you and your family. Well, thank you so much, Max, for having me. And uh, I wish you the best. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. Thanks, everyone. It's here. Cheers so to Yes, life. it's true. Two harvests per year in Florida using LED lights with 91% of the average yield of the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Unbelievable, uh, unbelievable, but true. We want to thank Dr. Agihara for sitting down with us and, and us We want to thank Dr. Agihara for sitting down with us during this holiday season and sharing the information that he's learned and they have learned at the University of Florida in their hops project. I also want to thank you during this season for spending time with us, sitting down and watching our live. If you missed our first live with Dr. Agihara, here's a link, hopefully learning this YouTube thing but if not I'll definitely put it in the description down below our first live he discussed more detail about the project the trellises the actual lights that he used for anyone interested in growing hops in areas where normally they are grown in latitudes closer to the equator check out that live Subscribe to our channel. We will be having a new live once a month, talking to people from around the world, all about hops, hops world. Thank you all. Happy holidays. Let's have a great 2021. Cheers to life.